Good afternoon and welcome to today's press teleconference. I'm Jack Gillis, Executive Director of the Consumer Federation of America. Today, we are joining forces with a diverse group of children's and financial literacy advocates to introduce The Neighbor Mood, a unique, advertising-free, truthful, and creative game designed to teach critical financial literary skills to young people. According to NPD research, over 50 million two to 17 year olds are gaming and far too many of these children have been diagnosed as obsessive gamers. They face mood disorders, obesity, anxiety, social withdrawal, problems that have become particularly noteworthy during the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, the World Health Organization has called gaming addiction a disease. Gaming that encourages young users to impulsively spend money and make poor decisions is fast becoming the norm in the gaming industry and the neighbor mood aims to change that formula. What is particularly tragic is that most of these games are just clever ways for corporate America to sell products to kids. These programs are highly manipulative and, and encourage mindless decisions to buy associated products. Amazingly, the majority of 11 to 12 year olds spend 50 to $100 a month on these money pits. Young people need to develop critical training skills and acquire real financial literacy. This program aims to take advantage of their familiarity with online games to provide, a, to provide substantial, substantial tools that will enable today's young people to become thoughtful and resourceful consumers. And now I'd like to introduce Will Dehu, Executive Director of Foolproof Foundation, who set the stage for the development of the neighbor mood. Will? Thank you, Jack. And uh, thank you and for, thanks to CFA for hosting this uh, wonderful launch event today. Um, I'm uh, Will Dehu. I'm the Executive Director and um, founder of the Foolproof Foundation. And we offer free web-driven financial literacy curricula based on peer-to-peer -peer teaching. We're the only major financial literacy resource completely anchored in teaching healthy skepticism and caution. And we've seen how, uh, how gaming has entered the education arena over the years and didn't really like where it was, uh, was going. Uh, we thought there were too many of the, the mind hacks that, uh, that keep students hooked on, uh, on this gaming. And we knew there was a better way and uh, lucky to find a, a partner with a group of uh, like-minded young people uh, based in Singapore and Hong Kong that were uh, developing STEM games at the time and still are um, with the same ethical standards that, uh, that drive foolproof. And uh, this company is called Dot Dot Fire. You'll be meeting them in a, in a few minutes. And uh, we've been working with Dot Dot Fire for about two years. And today you'll see the result of that work. And I'm uh, very happy to announce that the young people behind Dot Dot Fire are making a million dollar gift to parents and educators across America today they're providing the neighborhood game for free and advertising free via Volproof. Well, that's in a few minutes, but for now, I'd uh, love to introduce Foolproof's Chief Operating Officer and Gaming Director, Drew Guthrie, to get you in the game, as they say. So, Drew? Thank you, Will. Let's take a moment and talk about why the for-profit gaming industry is booming. Just like social media, the goal is to keep players playing and that that fuels the revenue through in-game app purchases and selling ads. But to what end? The vast majority of the industry just doesn't care if kids are obsessive gamers. If they did care, then they would include things like screen timers and offline activities, but those aren't profitable. We need ethically driven games that educate kids on real world scenarios. With that, I'm proud to introduce The Neighbor Mood, a game that teaches critical thinking skills that translate directly to life. With, when speaking about generational poverty, what happens if parents don't know how to help their kids uh, thrive and be financially literate? We include offline apps that actually help kids teach their parents about sound financial decisions teaches them that healthy skepticism that they need to have to make critical thinking skills uh, prevalent in everyday decision making. We want to make sure that we stop the generational poverty right where it starts and let's get the kids involved in that. So let's dive into the game. 
with that, I'd like to introduce Hillary, one of the primary developers of the game, and she can take you through it. Hi everyone, thank you Drew for introducing me. I'm Hillary Locke, one of the founders at Thought Thought Fire. And before I jump straight into the game, um, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering why and how an ethical developer like us can even exist. Well, us founders, myself included, grew up with educational technology in the classroom. I remember in high school where e-learning meant that I would be in a computer lab instead of a math classroom, doing the same set of problems on screen instead of on paper. And that really made us question, like, why were we doing this when we were getting none of the benefits that technology could bring us, while still at the same time being exposed to unnecessary screen time? And it's our collective experiences that molded our mission at Dot Dot Fire, not just to create tech for tech's sake and to create something that's truly transformative and beneficial for our kids. So onto the neighborhood game. We crafted this game with three major lessons in mind. The first was that small decisions can lead to huge consequences, huge and lasting consequences, as is the case with a lot of financial mistakes. The second is that marketers' job is to manipulate and persuade people into buying their products. That's their job, and kids have to recognize that. So our job is to teach kids to recognize when they are being potentially manipulated and pushed back against it. The third is that we have the power to impact our communities. Our footsteps, however small, will affect the people around us. And that really plays into the game, as you can see with even the name of the game, the neighbor mood. And so onto the game itself, we created this game so that it follows a character called Ali or Ali in their community. And one of the special things about how we've crafted this character is that Ali is non-gendered and fully customizable to represent um, how uh, different children look like and different people look like. Um, I know from firsthand experience how important representation is, and we want our players to really relate to our main character in the game. The game is uh, scored on several different parameters, two of which include the neighbor mood and the financial savviness. And these scores will increase and decrease and really reflect how well our players are doing in terms of their financial decisions and how these decisions um, can affect their neighborhood. And one of the most uh, unique things which Drew briefly brought up just now in our design of the game is that it's been designed to bridge from virtual to reality. We want our education not to stop at the screen. We want it to go into real life. The lessons taught in the game are real life lessons. And we want the game to be a platform to really kickstart dialogue and discussion at home with peers and in the classroom and with the help of the foolproof teaching guides. And now I think it's time to take a pause and acknowledge the fact that it's with huge irony that I'm doing this. I am here marketing to you all about a game that teaches kids how to push back against marketers. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce some groups and some individuals who generally oppose online gaming and have the, uh, the best interests of children in mind. Um, I'm proud to introduce Jean Rogers, the director of the Children's Screen Time Action Network, which is a part of the Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood. Um, Hillary, I'm so pleased to be here with all of you. As Hillary said, I'm director of the Children's Screen Time Action Network, and we're a coalition of practitioners, educators, parents, and advocates working to reduce the overuse of screen time in childhood and promote healthy child development. So as our parent organization is Campaign for Commercial Free Childhood, and we've partnered with Foolproof for many years because we really appreciate how they teach financial literacy, healthy skepticism in a way that teaches about the business model that is trapping kids in today's apps and games. And um, so when they came to us and said, we'd like you to check out this financial literacy game, I have to admit, I was a little skeptical. You're asking me to promote a video game when we want to get kids off of screens. 
Well, we know that we're not here to get kids off of screens altogether. We're here to promote digital wellness and how they can exist online and offline in a healthy way. So when I saw what they had done with this game, I was extremely impressed that they had done everything right. First of all, the game harnessed this technology to teach kids about being mindful about their finances. It's an avenue to help them develop important life skills. They're going to be online. This is the way we want them to be online. Next, the lessons they learn here have real implications in the real world for a young person to engage with these topics in a fail safe kind of way. Learning the hard way is incredibly valuable. And we know that they'll be doing that through the experiences they have in this game. And thirdly, we, <clears throat> they've gone to great lengths to design it in the way that we approve of, 100% ad free. Um, we certainly believe that ads are manipulating kids and that in this way, um, this game is unique. Commercial free, ad free, um, and has a time limit to how long kids can be on it, 30 minutes to prevent kids from spending too much time on their devices. And um, there are no sales tactics and no data collection. All the things that we object to in children's gaming and the reason we try to get them off gaming. So we're proud to say that Neighbor Mood is the first game we've ever endorsed. And we're, we're really excited about the way it's been developed. Um, and I'd like to introduce you next to Nina Hersher, director of the Digital Wellness Collective. Describe a little bit more how this game promotes digital wellness and digital flourishing. Nina? Thank you, Jean. That was lovely. It's always a pleasure doing work with you and I'm excited to come together as we are promoting this new game. So as Jean mentioned, my name is Nina Hersher. I'm the CEO of the Digital Wellness Collective and the Digital Wellness Institute. And what we are is we are an international trade association of humane tech developers and screen time educators. And so we are so proud to have Dot Dot Fire being the newest member in our network and to be coming together, especially during COVID as children, parents, really all ages are spending more time online and in front of screens than ever before. And so our overall mission is really to enhance human relationships through the intentional use and development of tech. And so, like I said, use and development, we have our educators and we have our developers and we love it when our educators are also developers. And so, we are international and when I heard about this, I said, oh my goodness, we have to get them to join the collective because there are so many areas of digital wellness. And when we're talking about digital wellness, we're really just talking about what does wellness look like in an era of increasing technology usage. And so we have this unique approach called digital flourishing that was um, developed by our research director, who's also a positive media psychologist. And digital flourishing really refers to a mindful approach to technology use, where we get to enjoy all of the incredible things it brings us while avoiding some of those associated harms that were talked about earlier in this presentation. And so with Dot Dot Fire and Neighbor Mood specifically, we're just very excited to see that their game really harnesses all of the positive aspects of technology and can teach children about this real financial literacy with other really key core 21st century life skills. And that I absolutely encourage children and parents to try this game together. Anytime people can experience things in tandem, unify in terms of language, it can start, it can activate very, very impactful conversations. And so thanks so much for having me. We're looking forward to working closely with you guys throughout this year, your launch and beyond. Thank you so much, Nina, and thanks to Jean as well. Um, it, it's so cool to have the support of the digital wellness world, and uh, it, it is quite telling about the game. So 
we don't want you to take our word for it. We want you to be a healthy skeptic. Go, go out there, download the game, play it for yourself. See if, what you think about it. We'd love to hear from you and encourage you to go out there and really challenge us on, on what we're saying because we stand behind this game 100%. We really feel like it is a game changer. So with that, um, uh, we are officially launched in the neighbor mood. And uh, I'd like to open this up for a question and answer. Uh, please raise your virtual hand if you have a question and any of the presenters will be happy to answer it for you. Drew, I'm uh, looking at our screen. I think we have one question here. Um, the first question is, what is the right age for children to start playing the game? Uh, great question. Uh, the, the game is designed for that tween to teen area, you know, late middle school, early high school, but it can be played across the board. Uh, during our testing, uh, we actually had kids as young as fourth grade playing it. And while they didn't get the uh, harder concepts of it, they were still engaged in the game, while older students, the juniors and seniors in high school, uh, were able to actually learn the concepts and, and ingrain them into their own critical thinking skills. Uh, I'd also like to add that I know quite a few adults who have played it and enjoyed it as well. So there's really no eight true age range for it, but we like that tween to early teens target. And I've got another question here, Drew. Um, the question is, can you please describe uh, the concept of virtual to reality and how the game brings that um, to life? Absolutely. So the, the game is based on uh, Ali or Ali being a senior in high school. So that work, life, school, social balance, it, it's all a balancing act to make sure that, you know, you make the right decisions for you. So throughout that, throughout Ali's year, uh, they get introduced to so many different real world consequences. So needing to get a job, needing to open a checking account being tempted by check cashing places or ads that pop up. We want to make sure and make it as real as possible. So the virtual to reality comes into play when we actually take those skills that they learn in each season of the game and bring those out into real world concepts. For example, being able to identify an ad, encouraging kids to look at the fine print and comparing that to what the larger print in the ad says that helps them analyze what exactly uh, are the consequences of them getting involved with that particular advertisement and turning them into a healthy skeptic, learning those critical thinking skills to make that decision, is this product or service right for me? And I think we have a panelist, uh, or excuse me, an attendee question. So uh, Ricky, if you could uh, turn that, uh, that question, uh, question asker's video on and we can uh, have them ask the question. Hi everyone, as you know, really excited about your game. I'm wondering if you will, if you have plans in the future to develop a similar version oriented towards college age um, kids or young adults, often many of them need those same critical thinking and financial literacy skills that you offer in such a unique and non-threatening and valuable digital wellness oriented way. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, answering from the foolproof perspective, and then I'll turn it over to Hillary from Dot Dot Fire. Uh, from foolproof, we, we teach uh, all across the board, all ages. So we have a curricula for adults and those college age. Uh, but we would love to uh, have a game uh, specifically for that age. And uh, to that, we have to look to our awesome game developers. And Hillary, take it from here. Um, we've currently tested our current game with a number of college age and young adult uh, students and adult working professionals, and they found that the core messages that the game teaches are transferable to everyday life. Um, but in terms of game development, we've actually developed more than just a singular game. We've just developed an ecosystem where we can submit new content and it work within the neighbor mood world. So we can customize this in the future to see if we can have more college or young adult oriented content, or even thinking further, uh, even a content geared towards adults who probably need financial literacy as much as the kids out there. 
So we really hope to have the chance to continue developing the neighbor mood in the future and to see what new content we can bring out there for um, kids, adults, and college age students. I, I think with what just happened with Robin Hood and you know some of the other trading apps that you have, a, a, it's really important for you guys to continue your work in this way and in the way that Robin Hood and similar apps um, are sort of gamified, you know, you're almost the perfect antidote. And we see how dangerous uh, ignorance has been when using um, those platforms. So I, I strongly encourage you to keep up the great work and keep addressing new problems as they arise. Thank you. And we'll definitely keep working. Got a question here, uh, part, part for Nina and then part for the rest of the team. And uh, the question is, uh, can you describe the importance of uh, mixing technology with, um, with, uh, with, with personal well-being and how to find that middle ground? And then the second part of that question, I'll just elaborate is, can you describe how the game finds that middle ground? So Nina, to you. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier that Digital wellness and digital well-being, which are used fairly interchangeably, are very big topics because there are so many kind of aspects to digital wellness, which is why we kind of created this flourishing wheel that breaks it down into different categories like physical health, productivity, you know, all, all of these different topics. And so I think that tech-enabled health is something that we're not talking about nearly enough when it comes to children. And in a way, this game is actually an example of tech enabled health. And it might not be an Apple product, it might not you know, keep track of your exercise, but we are cultivating a type of emotional health and strength and conversations through this game. And so, so long as you are choosing a tool quite intentionally with a purpose in mind, and that tool is super, and that tool is supervised, it is generally, you know, definitely worth exploring at the very least. Something that I really appreciate about this game is that it does actually prompt you to take a break about every half an hour. And so for those who are like, oh, I hate to interrupt my kids when they're in the middle of the game, they get angry, their friends get angry, they're all in a game together. This is something where it's just built in and it becomes part of the kind of routine of playing the game. And I'm sure that Jean has a lot more to add there. I would like to hop in. Thank you so much, Nina. Um, one of our hallmarks of good screen time, because we're always asked, what's good screen time? What's bad screen time? And one of the concepts we use as parent educators, I'm a certified parent educator, is that we talk about bridging. So if something you're doing on the screen will bridge to something you can do off the screen, it's a way better way to evaluate your screen time than screen time that keeps you on the screen. And as we've shown here today, Neighbor Mood teaches critical life skills that the kids are then gonna go practice offline. So I highly um, support the game as um, a, an excellent example of bridging. Thank you, Jean. And, and I'd just like to uh, ride your coattails on the bridging is, when we were developing the game, we wanted to make sure that parents knew what, what was going on in the game without having to play it. So we developed parent and teacher guides that actually walk through the scenarios that kids face in the game and then have conversation starters to be able to encourage them to learn more and apply those in, in a real world scenario. As we were developing those, we started thinking about kids who, whose parents don't have the financial knowledge uh, that, that they're learning in the game. So that's why we came up with our virtual to reality section where kids can actually encourage their parents to learn what, what the kids learned in the game, to be a part of that conversation. We, our goal is to fa help facilitate that conversation between children and adults and not make finance a taboo topic because if you're not able to talk about it, then you're more susceptible to the ads and influences out there that could lead you to a bad financial decision. Too, if I might just hop in on that, your coattails again on this <laughs> is that we do find it's a generational thing that because you're appealing to a generation that loves video games, that they are able to transfer some of what they learn to the 
older generation that's not so comfortable with video games or doesn't enjoy them as much. And we find that in the media literacy world, that when kids learn about advertising, when they learn about what's tricking them in media, then they teach their parents. And um, I think that's a wonderful um, sort of fringe benefit of neighbor, neighbor mood as well. Question uh, from, from the audience. How did the neighbor mood, uh, excuse me, how did the game get named neighbor mood? Hillary, would you like to take that one? Well, this is a kind of funny story because we were talking with Foolproof about creating a financial literacy game. And obviously the first words that come to your head are neither neighbor nor mood. But as we started thinking about it, we started thinking about the context of financial literacy. The reason why so many kids have such bad, are making such bad financial decisions, a lot of time isn't because they know they, they don't know they shouldn't spend on the thing. It's because of the wider uh, context that they're placed in. We can't expect kids and teens not to spend money. That's unrealistic. And it's the community impact and it's the personal um, happiness that are so intertwined with finance and financial literacy that we felt that to do something that we wanted to be transformative justice, we really need to incorporate that into our game. And that's where the neighbor and the mood came from. And it's to represent how personal happiness, uh, the well-being of your community and your personal finance are very closely intertwined. And it's striking that balance in real life that's really tricky. Wonderful, thank you, Hillary. And we are just at about time, but with the very last question, I would love to ask uh, the panel, Drew, Will, Hillary, uh, can this game be used by teachers and educators? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, what's great is not only Foolproof has a full financial literacy curricula for both middle and high school students, this is a great supplement to the financial literacy lessons that they learn either through Foolproof or elsewhere. And so what the teaching guides do is allows the teacher to be able to follow along with the game and be able to have those conversations in the classroom, whether it be virtual or an in-person classroom, but be able to encourage the conversations with kids about finances and really what is that those manipulate manipulatory aspects of advertising or, or other type of media that, that's trying to influence your decision. And just adding a little bit to what Drew is saying, um, not only teachers, but also parents and educators and other, any, any sort of uh, other interactions between peers, like we want this game to be a platform to kickstart the conversation and for it to be a more human interaction as a talking point for uh, teachers to better bond with their students, for parents to better bond with their children and for this to be a learning experience that they can go through together. Well, on behalf of the entire panel, uh, we'd just like to thank every single attendee and panelists for attending this uh, wonderful event. Uh, as mentioned, the game is now uh, live and available uh, for anybody across the country, 100% for free, ad free, everything as mentioned before. Um, I would uh, suggest and, and ask everybody that's interested in learning more to please visit foolproofme. Dot org, and you'll see that in our background screens, the green ones, uh, where you'll see a banner that will link to additional information uh, about, uh, about the event, uh, student interviews, teacher interviews, uh, many additional uh, quotes and support from other members of the digital wellness world who have played such a large, large role in this event uh, and this game being launched. So I'd like to just thank everybody for attending, thank the panelists, thank the supporters for everything that, that they've done, and um, foolproofme.org to learn more and uh, download the neighbor, the neighbor Mood and share it with everybody that you know. Thank you so much.